Okay, so we're back here. I went and got me a bad board. Obviously, you can see it's bad, bad. Everything's bad. So that's bad, this board is. But I went and I looked at the uh, part numbers on here to get which one goes where and wrote them down. So now that I know who goes where, I can make sure that this has the right ones. R42269, that is a R44269. This one right here is an R41539. And that one right there needs to be an R41545. R41545, so it is the correct one. So we can put it in and then test it. I got a bent leg. Make sure all the other legs are good, all right. Line it up onto the socket. Lined up on that side. Now it's possible he may have thought he had seated it in there because that little resistor pack does get in the way. That one's not seated in very well. That one's seated. Nothing's bent. Nothing's bent, nothing's bent, nothing's bent. I'm just check the 6801 over here, make sure that one's good. That one's good. This 6801 is good. Good. By good I mean that none of the legs are bent. All right, so that looks good there. I'm gonna do a quick slap together here so I can test this thing out. By quick, I just mean what I only thing I need to really concern myself is, is that nothing shorts out. So I'll plug the CV board back in, set it on top there, take the video cable and make it shorts over there. Now I'm gonna take it back over to the set, plug her in and see what she does. Okay, we're back over at the set here. And I plugged the CPU back into the system here. And like I said, when you can run this thing bare like this, just gotta watch these loose wires, make sure they don't come down and touch anything here. So pull them way back out of the way. Other than that, everything is okay. Let's just see what we get, if we get anything. Oh, I just turned it off, turned it back on. I forgot I had this thing turned separately here. Nothing. So there's more thing, more wrong with it than just the loose ROM popped out. I wonder if the ROM is itself is bad. Hmm, hmm, hmm. So there wasn't a simple fix. That kind of sucks. I was hoping it was a simple fix, but it's not. Let's just check a few things here. I'm gonna lift this up. Brace that up there. I just want to check and see, make sure everything is in. They're all in, they're all in correctly. Everything seems to be right. Let's just, anything hot, anything loose? I don't see nothing like that. Nothing hot, nothing loose. Let's just try this here. This shouldn't be an issue, but it may be an issue. I mean, we are obviously getting power and everything to the CV board. Try her again. Nothing's hot. Nothing seems to be getting warm. Yeah, I didn't take a test in that. Hang on a second, let me try something here. This reprinter I modified so that it doesn't print unless I turn that on. So I got it turned off right now, let me test that. I'm gonna turn the printer back on so it will print. If you're wondering how to do that, I have another video up there on the channel that shows you how to get rid of the printing noise. All right, so I've just reset the printer. I just wanted to see if it was typing. I just couldn't see nothing, but no, we're not getting anything out of there. Let me try something else. Again, he replaced the chips in here. So it makes me wonder if maybe the chips may be bad. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'll go off camera for a second. I'm gonna pop these chips out. I'm gonna put chips in from a different board and see what we get. Okay, so what I just did is I just spent some time swapping out each ROM chip 
with the one from the other board, testing, see if it worked. No difference, no change. So what I'm gonna be doing next is I'm gonna be changing out the Master 6801, which handles the whole Atom network, and the 6801 that handles the DDP. One of them could be bad and that could be shorting it out. So I'm gonna check that one next and then we'll come back to video. Okay, so what I just did is I swapped out the two 6801s. The 6801, just in case you don't know, is not just a CPU, it also has a ROM on it. So you can't just like mix them. You have to make sure you take the right 6801 and put it in the right place. I'm assuming that the guy did that, but when I swapped them out, I took them from the other board in the correct spot and put them over here. One of the 6801s is a master and it runs the whole Atom network, which is the data drives, the keyboard, the disk drive, the printer, everything interrelated. Then the other 6801, and also, I'm sorry, yes, and then the other 6801 runs the actual data drives itself. So the 6801 here sends out signals on the net, on the atom net, say it wants a block from the data drive, it sends out a signal telling the data drive it wants a block, and then the 6801 that runs the data drive gets the block and sends it back there. It, has, it wants to print a character to the printer, it sends out a signal to the printer saying here's a character to print. It wants to see if there's a key in the keyboard, it sends out a signal to the keyboard saying you got a key. Inside the keyboard is a 6801 that is waiting for that signal and it sends back the key presses. Inside the atom, or inside the printer, is a 6801 that's waiting for the master 6801 to send it stuff and then in turn runs the printer. Elegant little design. So we know they're not bad, we know the ROMs aren't bad, or at least we know that swapping in isn't bad. I could swap them into another system. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to really get in here and look really close to see if there's anything broken, anything burnt out, and see what we find. If I find something, I'll put it on the camera immediately. All right, so we're back again. What I did is I disassembled it completely and I removed the uh, atom board and I've been looking at it and I found some suspicious spots on there which may be bad diodes. I may swap them out just to check but at this point I don't see anything really broken on this system so it could be anything. So what I said is okay let's try something. I took another atom I had I had that has a bad CV board the RAM's bad so when I turn it on it's garbage. Now I just put the CD board on it. I wanted to make sure that there was nothing wrong with the ColecoVision board itself. And, voila, she works. She's not printing or typing because I have this off here. So let's turn that typewriter back on. So we know the typing works. So we know this atom board works on this one. This is the one I had in my spares. I wasn't questioning whether it worked or not, but I wanted to make sure that there was nothing wrong on the CV board that was causing it not to work. And if I reset up in the CV, it works good. If I reset down here, it goes back in good in here. Reset up there. So now it's a matter, of, can I figure out what is wrong with this board? Or do I take this board and say this is parts and send him back that one? I'm going to send him a message and ask him what he wants to do. Because these boards are very complicated. I don't know if you ever looked at your Atom boards. They're very complicated. There's a lot of little parts. And then because Clico and their wisdom was not too good in building things, there's a whole bunch of aftermarket wires hooked up here because traces were bad. They said, oops, forgot to do that. So, and every one of them is different. Every board has different wires on it. So, I'm going to run that past him and see what he says. And we may just have to call this one a done. So, I'll, I'll send him a message. If he's good with that, I'm going to put it all back together, back on film, so you can see that, yeah, even though I tried to figure out what was wrong with it, I couldn't. Though, you know, even if he does say to go ahead and do that, I think I may just swap out some, like I said, there's some suspicious diodes over here. And this is the part that broke on the one that I said died where the capacitor blew up. That's the same area. So I'm tempted 
to replace that. If he says yes, go ahead and just swap it out and he'll just take a replacement board. I'm tempted to replace that afterwards and just take one off of a garbage board I have here and try it. So we'll see what we do. All right, so I did some R&D. I took this over to the bench. I did a lot of close-up inspection. I found a couple diodes up in this area where I'd had a capacitor blow out before on another person's computer. A couple of diodes where the solder was suspect and I hit it with some heat. That didn't seem to help much. Then I started saying, started thinking to myself, okay. He plugged in the SD drive to run for the data packs. Somehow it affected the data pack circuitry. And based on how the atom starts up, if the data pack doesn't respond to the boot up sequence, the master CPU or the master 6801, the system could seize. That's what it appeared to be doing, that it was seizing. It wasn't that it wasn't working, it was seizing. It could never finish its boot up sequence to then actually let me type or see SpartWrite or anything like that. So what I did is I removed the 6801 took it from the known board that I tested the CV on and I know that 6801 works, put it on here, booted it up, and voila, that was the problem. The 6801 in one way or the other was either burnt out or something was bad on that 6801. I did check the 6801, here it is. Uh, hang on, here's the one I pulled out. Not that you can tell anything on it. I did check to make sure there wasn't any bent legs or anything like that. That didn't help. Now what I also did too before I swapped out the 6801 is I did the heat test. I turned this on and I just let it sit there for a half hour to see what got hot. Two things got hot. The memory module or the memory controller, the one that controls how the RAM and ROM sets up based on which resets you do. And the data pack 6801. The rest of the chips work nice and cool but this one which was not that one which was this one that aluminum heat sink was very hot to the touch so it made me think this is dead so that's when I went and I took the 6801 taking a chance on burning it out I took the 6801 out of this other board here I took that one out of the other board here Tested it in there, booted right up, no problem. All right, we've identified the issue. Then I went digging in my spares and I found another Atom board, which I can't use because the, expand, the connector cable is destroyed and a couple of chips are burned out and I should shut this off right now. So I pulled it out of there and I tested it, worked great. Then I put a data, pad, or data drive in here, hooked it up, booted up, worked great. So, we identified the issue. I don't believe the diode was the actual culprit, but it could have been part of the issue because, as I said, the last time I'd seen a system do this was a person had plugged in a data drive wrong and it caused these up in this area up in here to blow a transistor out. Or, not transistor, blow a capacitor out. The capacitor seemed to be okay, but the diodes that are part of this little circuitry up here, one of them was suspect. It looked like it, looked like it was burnt but maybe it wasn't burnt, maybe it was just, I don't know, build up on it. But I hit it with some heat just to re make sure that it was attached well. So we, now we know that this system is working and it is it was the 6801. So that's good, I'm gonna put this all back together now. I'll turn the video back on and then we're gonna do a full test to make sure everything runs good. All right, so now I'm gonna reassemble the Atom and I'll just fast forward through it. Um, Keep an eye on the screws so you can see what I mean by what screws go where. I'll try to point out which side screw goes which, which part.
All right, so as you can probably tell from the change of outfit, it's the next day. I was in there editing the video and I realized the last piece did not record. So we're back in here. This is his system. I put a data drive in here because I want to test it completely, but this is his system right here. I've plugged it back in here. I'm going to turn it on. Nice and pretty, comes up with the Atom screen. What this data pack has on it is a very small program I wrote that sits in the bootloader called DDP Verify. And it just verifies that a data pack has all the index markings. I just wrote it because I was getting tired of not knowing if the data packs I created were working right. So we're going to put that in here. I just want to make sure that we can read from the data pack. Hit the reset because I replaced the 6801 that runs the data drives. So we want to make sure that the data drives are still working. And there's the screen there. You can see it on the monitor. I'm not going to bother with the capture today. You can see there that what it's doing now is it's telling me to put another data pack in so we can verify. I can verify this one too. Just hit enter. And it would, it's now doing, it's going to read in each block. If it passes, it tells me it passed. If it fails, it tells me it failed. But what I wanted to show is that the system now is working the way it's supposed to work. A very pretty system going back to his owner.